Hi, I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. Okay, so January is over and I have finished eight books and DNF three. And so yeah, let's just get into it. I started the month off doing my um, reading booktuber favorites vlog. I'll link it up um, in the cards and in the uh, description below. But I read four books and DNF one. The first book I finished was The Last Quintista by Donna Barba Higuera. And this is a middle grade science fiction story um, about humans leaving Earth right before there's going to be a big deadly impact and flying off to go and resettle in a different planet. And the book starts off with, okay, so we follow Petra as she's saying goodbye to her grandmother. Her grandmother is one of the humans who are, is going to stay behind and most likely die from this impact. And her grandma is this like great storyteller. And so she decides to be a Quintista, a, a storyteller in the new world so that she can keep part of her grandma alive. It's really sweet and a really great opening. Uh, they get to the ship where they're supposed to be in stasis pods for close to 400 years. Um, but something happens with Petra's stasis pod that um, doesn't allow her to go to sleep right away. And she hears these plans of the people who are going to live on the ship and maintain the stasis chambers, um, basically saying that they want to reinvent society. And so they want to basically program all the people in stasis to not remember Earth and not remember the connections that they had made. And it's kind of up to her to kind of keep the memory of Earth alive. And I loved it. I have more thoughts, so if, if you want more thoughts, go to the vlog. But it was a great book to start out with. It was pretty dark for middle grade. Um, but I was constantly on the edge of my seat wanting to know what was going to happen. I do feel like it ended a little bit abruptly. Um, but overall, I gave it four stars. I also read Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I gave this three and a half stars. Um, it's about these friends who connect with video games and then go on to create their own. And they have a really fractious relationship. Um, one of the people has a chronic illness from an injury that he sustained in a car accident. And I really didn't like the chronic illness representation. It He never advocated for himself. He never brought it up. It was it's almost like it's an afterthought. Like, I don't know. It didn't feel authentic. But I did enjoy hearing about their relationship as friends and kind of frenemies. So, again, more thoughts are in the vlog. But I'm just trying to do light summations is, if you haven't seen the vlog yet. I then picked up Babel by R.F. Kong. This is set in Oxford and it's supposed to be like kind of a magical translation department in, um, in Oxford and it just wasn't for me. It was more historical fiction than fantasy and it just wasn't what I was feeling so I DNF that. And then I picked up my two five stars of that vlog. The first was The Five Wounds by Kristen Valdez Quaid. And this is a beautiful multi-generational family story. We follow a, a family as they have several life-changing things happening. And it was just, it was written really well. I really cared for the characters. They were really memorable and authentic feeling. So, yeah, it's one of my favorite books I've read so far. I, I just fell in love with this family and I rejoiced when they made progress and was saddened when they would mess everything up. And it was just, it was so good. So, um, I also read The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. And this was my other five star. It was it was amazing. It was set in a dystopian where a plague killed off um, 
huge swaths of the population, but it mostly affected women and children. Um, and so women are really rare in this um, dystopian setup. And uh, because of the plague, none of the children, like, are born alive. They're all born stillborn. And it's, it's a journey about her kind of surviving and trying to find a community. And because she was a midwife, um, you know, she's, she's helpful to the women and girls that did survive. And I mean, oh gosh, this was bleak, but it was, it was such a good story. I, I read it in two days. I didn't want to put it down. So those are the ones I read for the booktubers favorites vlog. So if you want to know any more about them, I'll link to the video. Um, the next book I read was The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. I didn't actually know very much about this story. I knew that it was about Martians invading Earth, and I knew that, um, like a little tidbit, that people heard it on the radio and they thought it was real. They thought, like, there was actually an alien invasion. And I, I kept that tidbit in my head thinking about, if I heard this on a radio, would I think this was a story? Or would I think this is real? And definitely, it's definitely a story. The writing is gorgeous. Let me share two examples of the writing that I thought were really good. It seemed indeed as if the whole country in that, dis in that direction was on fire. A broad hillside set with minute tongues of flame, swaying and writhing with the gusts of the dying storm and throwing a red reflection upon the cloud scud above. Like, nobody talks like that. Uh, another one was the decapitated colossus reeled like a drunken giant, but it did not fall over. It recovered its balance by a miracle and no longer heeding its steps and with the camera that fired the heat ray now rigidly upheld, it reeled swiftly upon Shepperton. So I thought the writing portion was really good. Um, however, I was at the 80% mark and we hadn't really started towards a resolution yet. And which worried me. I was like, we don't have enough time for a resolution. What What is going to happen? And yeah, we had so much buildup that the conclusion felt really abrupt and incomplete. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, even if it is really old. Um, and I was like, you know what? I, I could probably deal with the abrupt ending. Okay, that, that wasn't great, but it, it didn't ruin things. However, we follow an unnamed narrator through the story, and we're, we're seeing this invasion through his eyes. And unfortunately, he makes a bunch of sexist and ableist thoughts. And I wanted to share one with you because it really depleted a lot of the enjoyment that when I read this. You begin to see, and we're going to form a band, able-bodied, clean-minded men. We're not going to pick up any rubbish that drifts in. Weaklings go out again. And then a little bit further down the page says, Those who stop obey orders. Able-bodied, clean-minded women we want also. Mothers and teachers, no lackadaisical ladies, no blasted rolling eyes. We can't have any weak or silly. Life is real again, and the useless and cumbersome and mischievous have to die. They ought to die. They ought to be willing to die. It is a sort of disloyalty, after all, to live and taint the race. And they can't be happy. So, when I read that, I... I hated that part. And unfortunately, we still see these attitudes today, um, most recently with the pandemic, that the old and the sick and the vulnerable should just die to make way for the able-bodied people. And it's just, it's bullshit. That's what it is. So yeah, I gave this three stars, but it would have been a two star if I hadn't listened to David Tennant narrate it. That gave me extra joy whilst listening to this story. And yeah, I don't recommend this to anybody. <laughs> so 
Okay. Then I read On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. I gave this four stars and it has its own review, which is already up. So I will link it again in the cards and in the description below. Um, but basically, this is a character study of women who are drug addicts and prostitutes and are eventually killed by a serial killer. Um, but we don't really focus on the serial killer. It's not a mystery or anything. It's more focusing on these women's lives and what happened to make their lives go in this direction and just how resilient they are. And it's just, it's a beautiful character-driven story. There are plenty of trigger warnings, so look those up if you're um, sensitive. Um, but it's great. I loved it so much. I felt for the characters so much. They felt like real people, and I love when I can read stories like that. So, again, check out the review if you want more thoughts. All right, so then I picked up Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. This is set when India and Pakistan um, break in two. But I only got about 30 pages in, and it was depressing and slow, and I was just not in the right headspace for it. So that was my second DNF. And then I picked up American War by Omar El Akkad. And this is a dystopian set in the United States and uh, during the Second Civil War. Part of the South secedes and fights a war because they don't want to give up petroleum products like gasoline. Um, which felt really possible. Like, it felt very easily like something like this could happen. And... We follow through this girl's eyes as she's growing up during the war, um, her life when she's in a refugee camp, her life as a rebel fighting against the Union, and um, yeah, but it's a war story and it's devastating and it put me in a really bad place. Uh, I was so full of despair at the end of this book. I gave it four stars because I think it was incredibly evocative and it did what it set out to do. Um, but yeah, because of that, oh, I actually have the book. Okay. Um, because this is the third post-apocalyptic story I've read in a couple of months, I, I just think my body wasn't able to have any more despair or depression or any of that. So I picked up a romance book. I picked up Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. And this is a queer romance story about uh, Delilah. And she goes back to her hometown to be a photographer for her stepsister's wedding. And while she's there, she meets a woman that she is interested in and they have this flirtation and this romance and it's really cute. Um, one of the reasons I don't typically like to pick up romance is because I feel like the conflict is often fabricated and if they would just talk to each other it wouldn't be a problem. Um, which I think is such a cop-out because there are so many authentic ways that couples can have arguments and disagreements. Um, and for the most part, I did feel like that. Like, this woman has a child and is co-parenting co with her ex. And that's a thing that can naturally cause some conflict. And I liked that. I did feel some of it was fabricated. But I really, really liked this friend group. I really liked the romance. And just did my heart some good to read a happy story. And I enjoyed it and gave it four stars. I found out that there was a companion novel, Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail, by the same author. And Astrid is the stepsister. And um, so I was reading this. I'm like excited to get back to the friend group. Um, but yeah, Astrid's a really insufferable character. She is really uptight and, um, I don't know, not an original thinker. Like she's just... I don't know. 
Also, this was a hate to love. And I think that that just doesn't work for me in romance. Um, like, for example, the tension, the sexual tension is between an interior designer and a contractor. And the contractor does something to try and mess up Astrid's job. Like, she is purposely trying to do things that would hurt Astrid. And I'm like, mm, I don't believe the sexual chemistry. Like, if I actually hated you, if you were messing with my job, like, no. Hate to love is just not realistic to me. So um, when I found out that that's kind of what it was, I put it down. I was like, nope, did not care for this book. So if that's a trope com combo you like, uh, it was definitely fine. Um, it was just not for me. So yeah, those are the eight books I read and the three books I DNF'd. Tell me, what did you read in January and what was your best read or your worst, whichever you want to share? Let's have a chat in the comments down below. Thanks. Bye.